Hello! I want to apologize for not posting a video for a while. The format I was using was taking way too much of my energy. The curse of ME! So I took a break to figure out a new format, and this is what I came up with for the current and future videos. Let me know in the comments if this works. Pause here for title card! Hi, I'm stuck in bed, and now you're stuck in here with me. If anyone wanted proof that neurodivergent people can't choose their special interests and hyperfixations, look no further than my current fixation with Sherlock. I have rewatched the whole series twice in a matter of a week, and I hate this show with a burning passion. But since I haven't been able to focus on anything else for half a month and I need to get a video out there, here I am ranking this garbage show from absolute garbage to not that bad. Number 13, The Final Problem. Anyone who has seen the show already knows why The Final Problem is the worst Sherlock episode. Anyone who hasn't seen the show already knows the final problem is the worst Sherlock episode. It's so bad that fans needed to invent a secret good fourth Sherlock episode to explain why it's so bad. The whole thing makes no sense. Just the sentence, Sherlock has a secret sister that he forgot and a secret friend who he remembers as a dog that the secret sister killed, should have stopped Moffat and Gaddis in their tracks. The funniest thing is that the grounds for the secret sister twist were laid starting at the wedding episode. They were so proud of it that they started hinting at it a whole series before we actually met Eurus. 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 It's a stupid name. There is one moment in this episode that will always live rent-free in my head. Mycroft saying he won't commit murder. But... <laughs> Mycroft, sweetie, honey... Baby Boo, come on! You've been consistently characterized as being the British government. The British government. I guess murder is fine if it happens indirectly, but pulling the trigger? Oh, he could never do that. Fuck. Someone needs to sit Moffat and Gaddis down for a long history lesson on the British government. Number 12, The Abominable Bride. I'm of two minds about this episode. I love period pieces and mysteries, and the Amelia Ricoletti case is very interesting. It has actual clues, and they actually investigate. It's probably the most believable mystery the show has managed to have. But then halfway through, it's revealed to all be happening in Sherlock's head, and then Moriarty shows up for another fun round of queer baiting. Once the it's an imaginary crime plot twist happens, everything loses weight. Why should I care? Then the plot twist in the imaginary crime is that it was an army of women taking matters in their own hands because of the sexism in British society. Which, it's fucking rich for Moffat to think he has something to say about sexism when he only writes female characters to demonstrate how fucking amazing Sherlock and the Doctor is. Good lord. Number 11. The Great Game. Hey, speaking of queer baiting, here's some more bullshit. Just, oh my god. This whole episode is too much. It's a series of mind games between a gay supervillain and a man with mind powers. I can't even get invested in the mysteries because they all go by so fast. Each little mystery has such an interesting setup, but then they get solved in a blink of an eye. This is a problem in all the later episodes of Sherlock. To establish how utterly amazing Sherlock is, 
there will be a montage of all these interesting cases that we only get to see the beginning of. And then we're told it was all really cool, I promise. No, really, you guys. And that's what this whole episode feels like, an extended montage. The pool scene is iconic, though. Andrew Scott acts the shit out of those lines. Somehow he makes the shitty dialogue completely believable. Just mad props. Number 10, his last vow. I don't really have a good reason for ranking this so low besides that Magnuson disgusts me on every level. Which probably means Lars Mikkelsen is very good at his job. But I love Mary. The chemistry between John and Mary is insane. Most likely since Martin Freeman and Amanda Abington were married. The scene where John says, The problem of your past are your business. The problems of your future are my privilege. Made me cry. It was just so beautiful. Shame John doesn't actually do anything to help solve Mary's problems. Number nine, a scandal in Belgravia. Irene Adler, the straight lesbian. Sherlock is just so smart and sexy he can turn lesbians straight. Moffat has a really gross habit of writing bisexual and lesbian woman characters that get forced into positions where they have to flirt or make out with men. The only time any woman-loving woman relationship gets mentioned is always in a way that fetishizes them or scandalizes, huh, huh? Others. And men-loving men relationships are strictly used as a joke or to make male villains into absolute psychos. Because nothing is more terrifying or funny than a man loving another man. Just fuck off. Credit where credit is due. Lara Pulver sells it. She really sells the whole story. Even when she has to be impressed that a boomerang killed someone. She just acts with so much poise and grace and makes me believe in the yet more shitty dialogue she has to pass off as so smart. But I suppose she's already had a great blueprint with Alex Kingston's portrayal of River Song. Because let's face it, Irene Adler is just River Song. Can Moffat stop broadcasting his kinks to the whole world? We get it. You want a mommy dom. Also, Moffat keeps confusing character growth with funny hats. Just stop. Number eight, the six Thatchers. Mary is my absolute favorite character in the whole series. She's actually enjoyable and she doesn't pause every 10 minutes to wax poetic about how incredible or dangerous Sherlock is. At least not until the final problem where she gives a speech about how amazing Sherlock and John are. But then they kill her. For no reason other than to cause tension for the male characters. I thought Moffat had broken out of his creepy patterns of sacrificing women's lives for the male characters. But I guess not. At least the scenes with John and Mary are so cute. They have grade A couple banter. Side note, Moffat seems to be allergic to writing happy relationships. Almost all of his couples are having affairs. I don't know if he does this because he's bitter, or if he does this because it's an easy gotcha for Sherlock to pull on people, because Moffat and Gaddis can't come up with anything else. The worst part is that it tends to be the POC characters that are having affairs, and that there are very few POC characters. Sally Donovan's character gets completely hacked to pieces. No wonder Vinette Robinson left the show. Number seven, The Hounds of Baskerville. This is a fun episode. A wild ride with secret military laboratories, hounds from hell, and small town politics. But once you actually start to think about it, 
the whole episode falls to pieces. It's incredible how absolutely fucking stupid this whole episode is. Sherlock and John break into Baskerville when Sherlock could have just asked Mycroft, and he asks, and he asks Mycroft later in the episode. Then the giant dog is caused by a super secret hallucinatory drug that the villain is slowly dosing Henry with for years, but Franklin could have just killed Henry as a kid. Then the super secret CIA military psycho drug project made t-shirts? They made fucking t-shirts? Is what? Team building? Was Hound planning on starting a band? But the stupidest thing in this whole episode is the Mind Palace. Words and images just fly across the screen and Sherlock magically finds the right answer. I like to imagine what the director told Benedict Cumberbatch to do for the shot. All right, now just move your hands. Okay, blink, blink. Yes, now look shocked. Ooh, shake your head no. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But it's not just ridiculous because of the stage directions. The Hound Project reveal comes out of literally nowhere. There's no basis anywhere in the story for the Hound Project. Sherlock just pulls it out of his ass. But they could have easily laid the clues. Maybe have Sherlock and John investigate who Dr. Franklin is and find out about the Hound Project that way instead of pulling a magical blue bunny out of their fucking ass. I did love the innkeepers. Billy and Gary are mine now, and I'm doing something adorable and fun with them. Number six, the Reichenbach Fall. More queer baiting! Hooray! But honestly, I actually kind of like this episode. I love it when heroes fall, huh? The methodical way that Moriarty slowly destroys Sherlock's life and reputation is so much fun to watch, especially when I don't like Sherlock. Andrew Scott once again hits it out of the park with the conversation between Sherlock and Moriarty in 221B Baker Street. I feel like the whole computer code key wasn't even needed. Personal stakes are always more engaging than massive stakes. Moriarty destroying Sherlock's reputation would have been enough. But the computer code, trained assassins, and the whole opening with the break-ins is just a huge distraction from what is actually working in the story. Then the conversation on the bar's rooftop is so dumb. Jesus Christ. Whatever worked before is missing now. The way everything clicked at the pool scene is just gone. The conversations between Molly and Sherlock were really good, though. Which is weird, because Sherlock's closest relationship is supposed to be with John. But there isn't any pathos there. I guess that just highlights how useless John is in the story. Number five. The Empty Hearse. Just one question. Where's the story? Where's our plot? Sherlock gets called back to London to stop a massive underground terrorist attack. But then he spends his time farting about. Well, the story says that he's spying on key markers, but it adds up to him just standing in his apartment and tacking things up on the wall. So exciting! And then as the ultimate fuck you, Moffat and Gaddis don't even explain how Sherlock survived. And spends half an hour mocking fans who wanted an answer. I waited for years to hear the answer and then got a steaming pile of bullshit. At least I get to see John beat Sherlock up multiple times. <laughs> No. 25 a month. You have missed this. Admit it. The thrill of the chase, the blood pumping through your veins, just the two of us against the rest of the world. 
Number four, the lying detective. I actually get to see Sherlock acting sweet and like a human being. Hell yeah! Sherlock's interaction with Faith is just so genuine and heartwarming. It gave me life, watered my crops, frosted my cakes, and buttered my biscuits. This was the Sherlock I wanted all along. He took her out for chips and spent the night talking with her. And then we get to see Sherlock break down completely and it's glorious. I love character breakdowns. You get to understand characters when they are at their lowest points. But then it was all fake. It didn't happen. Sherlock faked the whole gosh darn thing, gosh darn it. So what was the point? All it did was illustrate how unhealthy John and Sherlock's friendship is. It's an enjoyable episode if you stop right after John kicks the shit out of Sherlock, but it just keeps going. Number three, The Blind Baker. This episode has the best characters and the best mystery. Unfortunately, it has the most egregious example of Orientalism I have ever seen. Were there no Asians anywhere in the writing process? No one to say, hey, we're just doing yellow peril with extra steps. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't use the China doll and the dragon lady in one go. Split some stereotypes up. Thank God the words ninja were never mentioned. The whole way the Chinese characters talk is just the fucking worst. Treasure of the East. Literally, kill me. Kill me now. Please. Then the way the death scenes are shot to show white people getting stalked by an invisible Asian villain is the exact same way Doctor Who shows people getting killed by aliens. To make it worse, this is the only episode with POC characters that have an influence on the story! I mean, except for Reichenbeck Fall, where it's the black woman's fault that Sherlock gets arrested. Fuck you, Moffat. Number two, A Study in Pink. This is a fun pilot, as long as you don't think about how all the characters stop to tell people how they are feeling. Why have John express any character traits or any thoughts of his own when you can have people tell him how he feels the whole time? When I was at college and I had pulled something like that, the professor would tell me to change it. But I guess when you're a professional writer, this stops being lazy writing by magic? Then Sally Donovan gets the short end of a stick of dynamite. She's only there to warn John about Sherlock and to get slut-shamed. At least the whole mystery is intriguing, and watching John and Sherlock run about is fun. Just don't think about the way PTSD and disabilities get portrayed. Apparently, people can be cured of PTSD if they have a friend that regularly throws them into danger. Mrs. Hudson is fun. Just ignore how she's used to make gay jokes. The cabbie is fun. Just ignore how the clever way he gets people to kill themselves is by pointing a gun at them. The whole episode is building up to this massive reveal of a villain that can talk people into killing themselves. Maybe by using their past or their current lives or their shameful secrets, anything. But he just points a gun at people. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna talk to you. Then you're gonna kill yourself. Oh, I'll just point a gun at you, I guess. Oh, fuck me. Number one, the sign of three. Once in a while, even bad shows will have an episode that clicks for me and makes the whole thing seem worth it, even if just for a minute. In Steven Universe, that was the first half of Ruby and Sapphire's wedding. Here, it's the sign of three. Everything just clicks and it's wonderful. Well, objectively speaking, A Study in Pink is the best episode, but my favorite episode is The Sign of Three. It's just good old-fashioned fun. The stakes are low and personal. John actually gets to do stuff in the story, and the whole thing is so shiptastic for the ultimate OT3. 
Mary, John, and Sherlock. The couple banter is amazing. And even Sherlock's speech is so sweet. Even more sweet Sherlock and him not acting like a constant dick. Sign me up. Janine is also really fun in this episode. I mean, Sherlock later uses her to break into her boss's office, but for now she is fun. It has yet another montage of interesting cases we don't get to see, but the Mayfly Man and the Invisible Man mystery were really good, and the whole twist doesn't immediately fall apart if you think about it. The only problem is it's a whole episode of Sherlock farting about at a wedding. But if that's your jam, then this is the only Sherlock episode worth seeing. So if you have any sense, don't watch Sherlock. Be smart. Be better than me. Well, I was stuck in bed and you were stuck here with me. But now you may go and live your lives. Go. Be cute. Be gay. Do crimes. Bye.